Hello, welcome to Learning to Drum. I'm your host, Adam Tevlin. We're in week 33, episode 31. Welcome back to the show. And last week we had a little bit unconventional of an episode. We interviewed a Clarence Boudreau, and he was the one that designed the Cajun practice pad and of course manufactures it. And he had some really good things to say as far as, you know, you don't, you know, have to practice, you get to practice. You don't have to play, you get to play. Those are really, really good words of wisdom. And it's just to let the cat out of the bag, I think maybe some of you already know, but Clarence Brudreau is actually Dr. John Wooten himself. He agreed to come on the show in character. And I think it was hilarious, his commercial with the practice pad. And it's actually very ingenious. So I don't know if you know this or not, but professional drummers, most professional drummers, as a matter of fact, most of them, I mean like 90% or more, have to do their own marketing, their own promoting, their own everything. Personally for me, I don't like to do it too much, uh, even though I have to. As you can tell, I don't say every episode, go buy my book. I say, go back to episode one. But uh, if you've had bought the book, I appreciate it because this money does go to the show and help support the show and continue it if you like what you see. So by all means, I'm gonna say it now, please buy the book. I know I show it for free and everything for those who can't afford it and that's fine. But if you can't afford it, it really helps out the show. And so Clarence, his character rather, invented by Dr. Wooten. He comes from the deep swamps of Louisiana, as I said earlier, and it's a fictitious character, but it actually gives you a glimpse of where he came from. And one way to kind of get around that, I think, you know, Dr. Wooten said, well, let me go ahead and just invent this character here based on people that I've known in my life and, you know, of course, in the bayou, the swamps of Louisiana and, you know, crawfish and alligators and, and all that stuff, you know, that's, that's a culture right there. And one thing I do want to let you know is, is the drumming community, and I am not one to speak for everyone, but I know this for a fact that the drumming community happens to be one of the most inclusive communities of people here in the world, I'd probably have to say. It doesn't matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter how you look, how you talk, what you believe, what you don't believe. Now, if you, if you believe that I don't need to practice, I'll become a good drummer that way, then there might be some problems for yourself. But, um, but I, I just know this for a fact. It's filled with people that have a common goal. And that common goal is to learn how to play the drums or get better at them. Um, you're always learning and you know, there's never a stopping point. And so anyway, I just wanted to let you know that that is Dr. Wooten. We're gonna have him on the next season. And so without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get into study number 15. We got a lot to do today. Let's go ahead and dial our metronomes up to, we've seen these rhythms before and it's a continuation of our new time signature that we've learned, which is two, four time, two beats for each measure, right? So let's go down to, let's try uh, 65. That's a nice tempo. And again, you've seen these rhythms before when we were playing them in 4-4 time. I am not gonna repeat it because we just need to save some time today. We do have a lot of material to cover. And always remember to dial your metronome up to the 2-4 time or where the high click comes on every two. Two, and here we go, and. One E and a two and a one and a two E a one and two. Not too bad, okay? So one E a two and a one E and a two and a one and a two E a one and two. So number two is gonna go one and a two E and one E a two. One and a two and a and two. Okay, so I'm gonna feel that downbeat of one there in measures one and measures three and four. Okay, so that way I know where to come in at it. Here we go for number two. Two, and a here we go. And one. And one. And two. All right, very good. Number three, very self-explanatory. Uh, we got some 16 note rests. And again, you wanna feel the downbeat of one on that second measure there. <laughs> And a two, E, and. E, a, uh, E, and a one, E, and a two. Okay, so watch that one. Okay, so here we go. Two, ready, and a go. And one, E, and a, E, and a, E, and a two, E, and. E, a, uh, E, and a one, E, and a two. Okay, no big deal. But 
again, I'm feeling that downbeat to kick myself on the E's or the U's, whichever the case may be. And, and of course, for the U's, you'd want to use that eighth note or the and to kick yourself off on that. Okay, number four, one, a two, E, and a one, a two, a one, E, and two, one, E, two. All right, here we go. Two, and a, here we go. And one, a two, E, and a one, a two, a one, E, and two, one, E, two. No big deal. And you can stick this however you'd like. Uh, probably you might have a little bit better time with the first four doing natural sticking. Uh, but that is your choice, whatever you'd want, okay? All right, number five, we're getting into triplet notes now in 2-4 time. Just like in 4-4, four it's just we have two beats per measure. Here we go, number five. Oh, excuse me. Make sure you take off the 16ths and bump up the triplets. There we go. One, two, ready, and go. And one, two. No big deal, okay? All right, now I'm gonna dial down the triplets in number six because we have a mixture between eighth notes and triplet eighth notes, all right? So I have to subdivide and, and make sure that uh, I get the eighth notes correct. One and two, and here we go. And one and two, and one and two, and okay. That is it for number six and seven. Now we're gonna dial up the eighth notes again, just so that way we could get our triplet sixteenth notes lined up with those eighth notes. Remember we talked about the common denominator when we studied this in four, four time. Okay, so seven, I'm gonna sing it instead of count it. Ba, ba, ga, da, da, ba, ba, ga, da, da, ba, ga, ba, 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 ga, da, ga, da, ga, ba, 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 ga, da, da, ba, okay? And you'll see how that lines up with the eighth notes. Here we go, number seven. One and two and here we go and cool, not too bad, huh? Okay, let's keep going at number eight. Da 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 Ready, and go, and. Okay, it's a little tricky, but uh, take it slower if you have to. One, and two, and one, and two, and. Okay, all right, great. Well, that's study number 15, and uh, work on it. And, and like I said, if you have to go slower, that's okay. And now on to other things. We are going to learn a new rudiment, and that will be after we do test, okay? Uh-oh, test time. You know the story. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're going to be testing on double beat. You remember the goal was supposed to be at 130 beats per minute. And so you want to make sure that you're doing that. If you can't do that, that's okay. We talked about the hinge and making sure you're using the hinge there to when you're in greater speeds and what have you. So we're going to start at 120. I'm going to dial my 16th notes back up again, and I'm going to go into 4-4 four, four time on my metronome. So that way we have the high click on every four now. Okay, we're going to review that at 121st. One, two, watch the hinge, two, here we go, and. Okay, all right, now for the test tempo. All right, here we go, 130. Can you hang? All right, let's try it. Two, one, and two, and here we go, and. Okay, there it is. And you know when I do this exercise, I don't really stop it every time. And that goes for all the other exercises that we've been doing. I just kind of loop it and loop it until I want to up the tempo. And then I'll, I'll do it for about five minutes that way. And that's how I kind of do it. But that choice is yours. And you notice we're using the hinge. 
You do that drop catch, push, pull, uh, open, close, whatever you want to call it, right? Okay, and get the feel of that. Now, obviously that tied into digga digga dars, right? When we're isolating the diddle for double beat, now we can take it back to digga digga dars. Okay, you remember that? Remember that the test tempo would be at 90 beats per minute. And so it will sound uh, like this. And, and I can drop it down to 90 there so you can hear what that's going to sound like. You're going to see me doubling every 16th note. Okay, one, two, you don't have to play. Ready, go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and review that, and I'm going to drop it down to, let's try... Uh, 70 beats per minute I think would be good. Now remember to try to carry over the concept of that drop catch into your consecutive diddles and, and that roll part, okay? Remember it's, you know, no difference between singles and doubles except the doubles I'm just hitting at twice the speed. So let's try 70. We're going to review that. Here we go. One E and a two and a ready and a go E and a... Okay, so the concept of that drop catch, you can see from the side angle as I'm doing my roll, it kind of looks like double beat. Okay. Okay, let's try that at now 80. Two at 80. Here we go. One and two, and here we go. And. So work on that and we're going to get into now a new rudiment. Now, because you could do digga digga dars that we just reviewed, because you can do double beat, which you just been tested on, this is going to enable you to play the next rudiment, which is called the drag or the half drag. Okay. It's also controversially called the rough. As a matter of fact, a uh, legendary rudimental drummer by the name of Frank Arsenal. Uh, had demonstrated all 26 rudiments, National Association of Rudimental Drummers, the NARD rudiments. Uh, now we have the PAS International Rudiments, which are 40, and you can find those at PAS.org. But the drag, okay, so why is it controversially called the rough? Well, Frank Arsenal introduced the rudiment, and it's in publications and other books that it's synonymously called the rough as well as the drag. So, there's an argument of what is a rough. Well, if you look at the 40 PAS rudiments, you'll notice that there's this rudiment, which is a short single stroke roll like this. Okay. And some people even double those, you know, and things like that. Some people, some educators out there, and this is why we have so many different opinions still and approaches and everything, and, and there's really no right or wrong. Just know that if somebody says rough, it's going to be drag. And if somebody says drag, it might be a rough. It's up to you, okay, and how you want to approach that. So really the rough and the drag are really synonymous, and people can disagree with me on that, and that's fine. Um, but that's just the way I was taught. And what is the rough or what is the drag? And usually I would call it a drag just so that way, you know, we have similar terms here, right? And, and really what a drag is is just a diddle, okay? Now the half drag actually is a position like we have with the flams to where one stick is up and the other stick is down. And that grace note, instead of playing a grace note like a flam, okay, we're gonna diddle that note. And now I'm ready for my left hand drag. Oops. Right? You try that. Here we go. Right hand up, left hand down. And we're gonna diddle and exchange. Now my left is up and the right is down. Much like the flam, right? Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna do this open, closed, open, and there's some different approaches when it comes to the drag or the half drag, okay? And that is, in a concert band scenario, you're gonna end up wanting to um, tighten up that and maybe even buzz it. 
right? Okay, so and then also, uh, and sometimes in rudimentary old solos, uh, it's a little bit tighter in there. So if they were to demonstrate it open, closed, open, from that, you know, old 18, 1700 style, they might do it like this. Etc. Okay, but this is the way I heard it from Frank Arsenal, and he demonstrated, like I said earlier, the 26 rudiments, and he actually divides those two notes there evenly between the main note. Okay, I'm going to do the drag, half drag, or the rough. Uh, open, closed, open. You don't have to play with me, just so you can hear how that sounds. Okay, ready? There it is. All right, so that is the drag open, closed open, and it's also called the half drag or even sometimes the rough. Don't beat me down. Okay, so now with that said, we can also do this with a metronome like with all of our other rudiments, and we'll go ahead and drop it down to the goal for the drags are gonna be 120. So let's just do it at 60 first. And we'll take off those 16 notes. Here we go, right hand up, left hand down. Ready, go. Exchange. Okay, you can do it like that. Okay, 70 sounds like this. <clears throat> Two, here we go, and. Right? Okay, let's go up to the test tempo. You don't have to play with me, I just want you to see what that's gonna or hear what that's gonna sound like. And it's not too bad. We did flames about this speed too, so no big deal. One, two, and one, two, here I go. Okay, that's it. That is the drag or the half drag or the rough, however you want to call it. And really that's kind of what it is. And we're going to be able to use that drag in other things that we'll learn about down the road. Well, that's all the time that we have for this episode of Learning to Drum. I'm your host, Adam Tevlin, and always remember to keep swinging those sticks.